Um, if you are here to learn about machine learning on the edge, there's going to be none of that from here on. So you can clear out <laughs> if you want. It's up to you. Um, yeah, that, that part of the program's done. Uh, we missed a huge opportunity here tonight um, not to turn this into a drinking game because every time somebody said edge, we should have had to drink. Um, but that's... Let's get the drinking game going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stand up there, otherwise everybody's going to think I got, I'm going to be entertaining you for two minutes. All right, we're good. All right, I'm back. Okay, um, so hi everyone. Um, thanks for having me out and thanks Drew. Um, uh, as Drew mentioned, my name's Cam Linke. Uh, right now I'm the interim executive director at Amy. Um, prior to this, uh, I've been on the board of Amy for about three years now. Uh, my background's in like product management and all that fun stuff. Uh, I started an organization in Edmonton called Startup Edmonton with uh, Ken Batista. Does anybody know Ken? How many people know Ken? Uh, yeah, you, everybody say hi to Ken after. Um, if you have machine learning questions, he can answer them. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so started that, ended up, um, I actually went back to school about a year ago, so uh, most of my time, ideally, I spend doing uh, reinforcement learning research. So how many people have heard of reinforcement learning? Yay, okay, sweet, that's good. I'll talk a little bit about that. How many people have heard about machine learning? <laughs> okay, that's good. I will be talking very little about machine learning. Uh, how many people have heard of Amy? Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Some new. Some new people I could talk about, tell about. Okay, so I'm gonna give a rundown on Amy. We're the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute. I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes giving you like a little like background on how the heck like Alberta ended up being like one of the top places in the world for AI, or at least AI research. Um, and then uh, uh, I'll spend a little bit talking about, spend about 10 minutes talking about like going forward, what Amy's doing now and how we're um, trying to build the um, AI ecosystem overall in Alberta. Does that sound good? Everybody's on board. All right, can everybody hear me? I come from a family of four siblings. There's six of us. So if you don't yell, you don't get heard. So uh, uh, I can talk loud. So Amy, overall, our vision, our mission is to turn Alberta into the best place for both foundational research of AI and for the application of AI. And I'll give you a little background on how we're already basically nailing the foundational research part um, and talk about how we're going to uh, work at driving the like application part going forward. Um, so Amy was originally founded as the AICML back in 2002. How many people were doing AI back in 2002? Couple, all right, that's good, nice. Um, so uh, not a lot of groups and places were investing in AI back in 2002. It was kind of you know, somewhat in the AI winter uh, type thing. But uh, here in Alberta, um, uh, we decided that investing in AI was an important thing. So um, the provincial government's actually been investing um, in artificial intelligence here in the province for over 16 years now. Because of that, we're able to be, become one of the top uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence um, research organizations in the world. Um, depending on how you want to like move the rankings a little bit or how, what you want to include. Um, between the U of A and Amy, we're the second or third um, rated um, research group for AI in the world. So it's basically Carnegie Mellon, um, Xinhua, who's uh, a university in China whose name I just butchered, um, and us, who are, uh, who are, and then us, or who are like the top three in the world. Um, we have, uh, we're a large research group, so we have 14 people specifically in our group that do AI research. Um, we have, a, we're out about, up to about 12 to 14 staff now, um, and we have 100 uh, grad students specifically within our group studying foundational uh, machine learning. 
Um, now, if you add to that other kind of like profs at the U of A, um, you know, there's around 20 people specifically kind of in our orbit at the U of A doing AI research um, and applying AI research to what they do. Um, and just to give you an idea, we had 1,700 applications from around the world for 75 grad school spots um, in our program. So um, really high demand. We're very fortunate to have a really kind of like um, uh, high performing like AI group here in the province. So we're pretty broad AI wise. We don't have a specific area that we focus on. Um, we're pretty, we'll use almost any technique um, and apply it to almost any area. Um, that being said, we're pretty well known around the world for reinforcement learning. Uh, we're basically the like intellectual home uh, for reinforcement learning. I'll kind of explain why in a little bit. Um, and so here's the like kind of quick rundown. Founded in 2002. In 2003, Randy Gable, who was the um, the chair of computer science at the time, made three offers to three American um, PIs or three. Um, Three researchers, not all of them were American, I guess. Uh, Dale Sherman's, Richard Sutton, and uh, Mike Bowling. Um, I was hoping that one of them would come to come to the U of A to um, to research uh, reinforcement learning and start the group there. All three of them accepted the offers, so instantly we basically had the like biggest RL group in the world, and we've added to that ever since. Uh, but additionally, we built the group in there from. Um, at the time, four people to, um, you know, over this time, the 14 that we have. Um, in 2007, as part of like our additional funding, we were, uh, had a mandate to focus some of what we're doing on healthcare. So that's what brought in some researchers like Yataka Yasui um, and um, Osmar Zayan. So uh, it's also the reason we end up having like a pretty big focus area on precision health with it, within what we do. Um, and then kind of from around 2010 till present, uh, we rebranded as AMI, the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute. And um, uh, about a year ago, the, the federal government went, holy, we have this like huge lead in AI um, across Canada. We have like three of the like OG AI people. So Yashua Bengio in Montreal, um, Jeffrey Hinton in Toronto, and, um, and Rich Sutton um, at the U of A, um, who are absolute world leaders in what they're doing. Uh, we need to invest in this and build on our lead. Um, and so the federal government invests in those three centers um, to specifically grow Canada's AI lead um, in research, but also um, to grow our ability to apply um, the like great things that are being done at the schools. Um, Big thank you to all of our government funders up till now. Um, as I said, it's pretty cool that when like nobody else in the world was really putting money into the AI, uh, our provincial government was. So we're pretty fortunate, you know, to have what we have now. Um, as I mentioned, we're one of the three hubs as part of the uh, Pan Canadian AI um, uh, program. Uh, Montreal and Toronto are pretty focused on deep learning. Um, and then we're pretty focused on, um, on reinforcement learning as far as like what the like core thing that um, we're like well known for. And then historically our grads kind of go um, around the world, um, but one of the cool things that's happened in the last like two years is that a lot of our grads have ended up coming back um, to, to Alberta. Um, we've had these companies who have really tried hard to recruit most of our profs. Um, they don't want to leave, and so they've ended up setting up offices um, in the province to be able to tap into that talent. Um, so what was kind of historically more of a brain drain has ended up being something like kind of the opposite. We're actually net positive talent-wise. Um, so I'll give a quick rundown just on like a little bit of research. Um, these are our researchers. Um, they're all like my favorite people in the world. Um, I can't speak enough to them. They've basically all been offered like more money than I'll make in my lifetime to leave. Um, and have all decided to stay. Um, a big part of it's the culture um, of the group and the fact that they love the province, they love the university, and they, they uh, want to be able to stay around each other um, and continue to do research with each other. Um, there's some like cool things. Most of these I'm going to talk about 
Um, but there's things like in 2007, uh, like Checkers was solved there. Um, Randy's group built a system capable of passing the Japanese bar exam. So some really cool like foundational machine learning um, things that were done there. So a couple of the big areas that we're known for, algorithmic game theory is one of them. Um, so this group's in, largely run uh, by Mike Bowling's group. Um, so I don't know if anybody remember or have seen, has seen like the AlphaGo documentary. Uh, so AlphaGo began at the U of A um, and then it was David Silver um, who ended up going to DeepMind and basically finishing that project there. Uh, but he was, uh, he, that project started at the U of A and then went there. Um, things like the Atari game project um, is still largely let out, of the U of, uh, let out of our group and let out of the U of A. Um, and I mean, a lot of the stuff, so we get asked a lot about why like games. And if you look at things, um, for instance, the Atari game project, the whole goal of it wasn't to play games. The goal of it was to be able to test algorithms that had to learn by themselves and see how generally they could learn across multiple different environments. And so games were a great base to be able to do that. Um, Deep Stack, so this was a thing that came out about a year ago um, with Mike's group. Um, so they're the first group in the world to beat poker professionals at Heads Up, No Limit, Texas Hold'em. Um, this is not a way we're actually allowed to fund our group, unfortunately. Uh, uh, we asked, we did ask. Um, the really cool thing about it is that there's two really, there's two groups really focused on this right now, and one of the groups um, basically needs a supercomputer cluster to do what they're doing. Uh, Mike's group runs the whole thing off of a uh, gaming laptop um, that you can just sit there and play the game. So. Uh, we use these environments to test out machine learning algorithms. Sometimes it's things like, um, like testing the generality of things. Um, sometimes it's, uh, you know, you can model many other things as two-player imperfect information games such as security. Um, and so it's a, uh, these games are a great way to test these algorithms, but then they can be applied out, you know, kind of after that. A lot of this and the base of a lot of this is reinforcement learning, um, which I'll try not to talk too much about, um, but is the area uh, specifically that I study. Um, if you look at uh, like why reinforcement learning, uh, what we're trying to get to is higher and higher levels of autonomy. Um, and what that means is you need an agent that's able to learn online from its own interaction uh, with the environment and update its learning continuously. Um, and that's what reinforcement learning that um, problems are able to solve. Um, and so you look at like embedded systems, you look at things like robots um, that may have sensors that degrade um, or actuators that degrade, anything like that over time. You don't want to just build a model and deploy and update that every once in a while. You want it to constantly learn individually based on its own experience. Um, and so, oh, it's good for systems on the edge. I lied. There was a little bit of edge in my talk. Um, everybody drink. So, um, so reinforcement learning, really strong for stuff like that. Um, this is kind of the loop. I won't, I'll try and buzz through this presentation a little bit faster and not go into that. We can talk about RL after if you want to talk more about it. Um, the big reason that we're the center in the world for this is like the father of reinforcement learning, Rich Sutton, um, who is one of my co-supervisors, um, created the field of RL. Um, he's one of the most um, prolific people in computer science history. Just to give you an example, I hope most people know who Alan Turing is. Um, Rich passed Alan Turing in citations, I think three years ago. Um, so pretty well known, pretty influential computer scientist. Um, and he's probably the biggest reason that DeepMind set up um, in Alberta. And he was actually DeepMind's first um, advisor. So, you know, a lot, arguably he's the reason actually that DeepMind got um, started because, uh, you know, he really encouraged Demis to, you know, to push forward um, with the application of RL and said, you know, hey, I think this is kind of research lab thing. I think it can work. I think you can do it. Um, so there's some cool ways that uh, we end up applying RL. Uh, one is out of Patrick's um, prosthetic um, program where uh, we teach and his group teaches 
um, limbs to learn about their user, so they learn online about what the user is trying to do, rather than um, the user having to learn exactly what little thing that the arm is going to do at any given moment. So a much more natural way of prosthetic limbs interacting with people and creating much more effective prosthetic limbs just through better algorithms. Um, uh, there's a water treatment uh, optimization thing that we're using. So if you look at similarly, you have uh, any optimization problem and a lot of these factory optimization problems where you have a number of different actions you can take over time. Uh, each of those affect uh, what the like result and you have to learn based on that loop what the best thing to do is. Um, so those type of things that are the types of things that RL is really good at solving. Um, and like for instance, it, like a similar technique is what Google used to reduce the energy uh, consumption for their servers by something like 20 to 40 percent, um, uh, those type of things. As I mentioned, we're pretty broad across AI um, in our group. I'm going to fire through most of these a lot quicker just to um, get onto some of these things and wrap up on a reasonable amount of time. Um, so things like visualization um, and data extraction, uh, we do a lot in health um, around patient, uh, hmm, I'm not sure which one of these is mine. Um, uh, we do a lot around personalized medicine and like uh, things like patient survival prediction. Again, patient survival is one area that these things can apply to, be applied to in health data. Um, whether your customer is going to survive, and I don't mean like die, but like exit your like platform. Um, you know, those type of things are all like survival prediction and things that you're going to want to be able, that you can be much more effective if you, if you can predict better. Um, this was a pro. This was the thing that they built um, that won a Thailand National Innovation Award, uh, where they were able to, with a simple camera setup, predict whether or not a sample of cells uh, had tuberculosis. And uh, you know, this was something that was basically way cheaper than the existing method of taking a sample, sending it to a lab, and getting a res uh, result back a few weeks later. Um, on. So a bunch of cool stuff. Um, so. Really strong research-wise, as I mentioned, we're one of the largest research groups in the world. That's something that you know, our goal is to continue to build that um, here in the province um, and continue to output you know, extremely hot, extremely strong talent um, here in the province. Um, other than me, I don't know how they let me into grad school. Um, as part of the like, pan-Canadian um, AI program, uh, we spun out as a nonprofit um, with more than just the mandate to grow research, but to grow um, AI and an AI economy overall here in the province. So I'll talk a little bit more about what kind of our goal for it is, you know, in that regard. Um, so right now we're we're on mission to drive a billion and a half of new economic activity based on AI here in the province over the next five years, and to use that base. Um, to do you know 10x more than that in the five years after that. So really, when we talk about you know diversification things like that, we actually have the base to do that. The like timing is right for the market, and now we're like pushing forward on actually you know um, executing on that. So there's four things that we focus on at Amy in order to do that. Uh, world class research and training. I already talked at length about that. Um, we work at growing the um, AI capacity in startups um, and SMEs here in the province. Um, we work at attracting corporate research labs um, and helping corporate research labs set up here. And then uh, we build um, training programs for broad-based um, AI expertise outside of just um, graduating you know, masters and PhD students, hopefully graduating in my case. Um, so the first one, working with corporate research labs, you probably heard the companies like DeepMind, uh, Google Brain, um, uh, Borealis, Huawei, uh, those type of companies have set up uh, here in the province. Um, the big thing for them is to tap into uh, the like, world-leading AI expertise um, that we have here. Um, so we work with them to set up to both uh, build an effective lab to make sure that like, talent gets into those labs, um, to make sure that they're uh, increasing the training capacity, not de decreasing it, those type of things. Uh, there tends to be a lot of angst around uh, big companies setting up in places. You know, oh, they're just going to hire everybody. 
um, and like startups and like every other company is not really going to be able to compete. We actually haven't really seen that. Uh, what you actually see more in these AI kind of like up and coming AI hubs is that corporate research labs tend to act as talent capacitors. So you have people leaving school that would normally be like, cool, I'm out, I'm going to work for Google. Um, in San Francisco, I'm going to like New York or Boston or something like that. They stay in the ecosystem, they work in corporate research labs there for uh, you know, a short amount of time and then they hop out into a startup to go lead the AI team at you know, a company in town, those type of things. So they end up being very good for ecosystems as talent capacitors. Um, the biggest thing and the biggest impact we see ourselves having, especially over the next five years, um, are kind of the, the, the next two things I'll talk about. So one is working with local industry where our goal is to help companies here in the province build in their internal machine learning capacity. So most companies here in the province, A, don't have any internal machine learning capacity. They often have um, a strong uh, like technical team. They have a lot of data and a lot of industry experience, but not a lot of experience in effectively um, deploying machine learning applications. So that's where we step in. We don't act as like consultants to solve a, like to optimize a problem. We work on building that capacity inside of those organizations so that it's not just about one project, it's about them having the core competency to move forward on that. Um, so these type of companies typically, um, they're at the point that they're ready to hire or to be able to make their, you know, make an investment in their AI capacity internally, um, typically through hiring. Um, they have some sort of data and they have a business model that will, that will be able to benefit from AI. Um, that uh, the, the data and the business model is always you know, something to keep in mind and something that we look at before we look at working with companies. Uh, I won't name the company to protect the innocent, but we had like a company that was like, hey, we want to work with you guys. We're going to build up a team. We've been doing manual price prediction, our manual price setting for 10 years um, around, uh, I won't say what it is. We're like, great, we could probably help with that. We can help your team learn. Um, uh, like what what formats your data in? What like do you have like other like what your occupancy rate was? Um, and they're like, yeah, we recorded nothing. We're starting from zero. We're like, okay, we probably can't help. Um, so you know, typically we'll work with companies a little bit um, at the front end to say what areas could you could be useful to your business, um, and then you know, we'll our team will work with. Uh, work with those companies to build up uh, their capacity internal to what they do. Um, the last one, and this is a new one that we're going to be launching in the new year, is uh, building further AI talent here in the province. And so if you look at um, kind of the, what is needed as far as what talent uh, or what skills people need, most companies don't need a postdoc in machine learning or at least don't need 20 of them. Um, maybe they need one to like lead their group, maybe. What most companies need is somebody who can apply the science, not necessarily invent new science. They need somebody who can apply the tools, who can deploy stuff in production, and who can know whether or not what they're doing is effective, uh, whether they can measure it properly. Um, so this is more like can you tactically apply machine learning less than are you pushing the science necessarily. So if you look at what uh, the skill set for that is it's some math, some statistics, and some programming. Um, and if you look at what you know, maybe has been laid off quite a bit in the province over the last little while, it's a lot of people who have a background with some math, some statistics, and some programming. And so what we're launching in the new year is a program, um, first of all, to train up those people um, to give them what will roughly be a three-month program in the tooling um, and the application of AI. And then further to that, because we have a, t a lot of companies inbound wanting to work with us, both in and outside the province, specifically inside, um, uh, we'll, we'll apprentice them with those companies that we're already working with um, so that they have that additional hands-on experience and then we can spin them out right into a job with that company 
here in the province. Um, so this is a program we're launching. We're just building it right now. Um, we should have some like more information here soon. It's launching in uh, 2019, uh, in January 2019. Um, and you know, our goal is to train 100 or more people a year specifically in this and really help what is going to end up being a bit of a talent crunch in AI if we don't end up filling you know, that level of, uh, of folks here in the province. So that, that's kind of my like quick rundown. I think I stayed mostly on time. Uh, stay in touch. Um, my email you'll have at the end. Um, if you're interested, if you're a company kind of at the stage that I mentioned, where you're ready to build that, um, build that expertise internally, but maybe you're not there, you know, maybe you don't actually have that, uh, reach out. Um, hello at amy.ca is a great way um, to get in touch. Um, for things like the training program, we have a newsletter coming out, which that is the link and it should be live. Um, but so that's the, that's the link to just keep in touch about some of the things we have going forward. Um, we're running a couple specific things. So machine learning 101 for those who are, well, I mean, everybody here knows about machine learning. So maybe that one's a waste on this audience. Uh, we have an AI meetup that's going to be starting in Edmonton, uh, September 10th. Um, and then we're doing more things like uh, demystifying AI courses where we'll specifically work with companies hands-on on what the, like, what the areas of application could be for their organization um, and how to like roadmap that out a bit. So those are the things that are upcoming. That's kind of the rundown. Um, as I mentioned, my name's Cam. I'm cam at amy.ca. Um, feel free to reach out, chat with me. Uh, Warren is here tonight as well. Warren's our community manager at Amy, so you can feel free to bug him, ask Ken questions about machine learning, and ask me, don't ask Ken questions about machine learning. Um, you can ask me questions about uh, Amy or about reinforcement learning. And other than that, I don't know if I, anybody has questions, but yes. Uh, so for the most part, you would go through us. So our profs are basically all like maxed out. Um, and I would say they get more emails than I do, and I get a lot of emails. Um, so, and they it, just ignore them all. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like most of our profs um, probably won't respond, to be frank, just because they have so many people inbound, whereas like our role is to facilitate that. Um, now, if it's a research thing and very specific to the research that they're doing and you're fine with publishing and you want to fund research, that's something that typically works and makes sense with the university uh, or with our like PI group. If you don't want to publish and um, you don't necessarily have a like research project that you want to fund, what you're looking at is how do I apply some of these things, that's, you know, we have an applied team to specifically help companies there. Um, so that's a big thing for us is like being able to triage some of those things. And in some cases, you know, we might just be able to point you to a better resource than, you know, we can provide. Um, that might just be a better option. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the role that we play as an institute kind of sitting between the university and industry. Yeah, I can, but not right now because I'm developing that out as we speak. Uh, yeah, so we had one in the past. We've revised it a lot, so we're coming out with a new, like, basically industry affiliate program um, with a little bit more, you know, in the past it was pretty loose with companies that just kind of wanted to support what we were doing. Um, so we've, we have something very specific coming out soon. If you're interested, um, pop me an email, chat with me after. We can discuss that more. Um, but yeah, so we do have that. It's just in its like getting finalized stages right now. Uh, if you email me next week, you'll probably get a different answer than you're getting right now. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, no, so what I'll say is this, our goal, and I can't make any promises right now because we're, we're still working through the process. 
our goal is to have like as little like burden on any grad, U of A grad or not, um, to be able to do this. Like most people are in like a tough spot in many cases of what they expected they were going to have job wise and what they ended up being like kind of getting in industry right now. It's just things have dipped in the province. It's something that we think we can help with. So yeah, so I, I, as far as a sweet discount, I'm not, uh, not sure about that. But yeah, I mean, our goal at the end of the day is to not have that burden or have a further burden fall on those people. But again, that's something that we'll, we'll have, you know, an exact announcement on, you know, here pretty soon when we announce the, announce the program. But again, happy to chat more on that specifically after. And always happy to chat to U of A grads. Um, <laughs> I love everybody, but, you know, U of A grads. Yes? Yeah. I'm just wondering if that application includes something like organization change management, so helping students at Sydney to stake with the AI. So it's more on the people side rather than on the AI side. Yeah, yeah, we really like AI agents. Uh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Yeah, so Yeah, so it is a huge shift um, for us. Um, what we're trying to do is have more community things like meetups and talks and those type of things to be able to help bring companies along. Uh, we're not trying to boil the ocean. There's a ton of change and things happening in AI. Um, and there's only like certain things that ultimately we can be like very effective at helping with. Um, in our case, we think we can be help most effective when companies have kind of started to realize that they need to make that shift but don't have the expertise to be able to actually implement things. But as far as the like change management within organizations, there's groups and companies that very specifically do change management and um, help very strongly on the like people side of that. Um, that probably just makes a little bit less sense for us to do. So we don't focus on that that much, um, but we can probably help point people in the right direction a little bit on it. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yes. Uh, I have a meeting with, sorry, somebody from the University of Calgary tomorrow. Um, we do some work uh, with CDL, um, already coming down, providing some kind of like AI expertise and mentorship in that. Um, as far as specifically in the new like ML and IoT program, um, right now, no. Um, but we're like, like I said, a pretty young, we're, we're a, a lot old organization in one way, specifically with what we're doing with Amy as a not-for-profit and how we're growing right now, we're pretty young. So some of those things are like new things that we're developing out. So as of right now, no, but in the future, yeah, possibly. <laughs> no more questions, everybody wants to drink. All right, oh, one more, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, in this case, our goal is would lean more practical side. Um, can you build a project? Can you effectively evaluate it? Which ends up being actually a really, really, probably the biggest thing to be honest in most like machine learning projects. It's really easy to be like, look, we're at like 97% accuracy. And you're like, if you just chose option A, you'd be at 97% accuracy. Um, so, uh, the, you know, we're focused more on like, can you apply the science than like, are you necessarily pushing it? The reality is though, if you like, there's math in there and there's stats in there and you have to be able to learn some of those things. Otherwise, uh, what's going on is just gonna be way too fuzzy. Um, there's definitely tools out there that you can you know, upload a model and have it, or upload data and have it make some predictions on it. You know, there's some stuff like that that we're not trying to duplicate. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, our, our goal is to lean like practical, but obviously you know, with some necessary elements of you know, math and stats and you know, programming that you have to do that to be effective. Uh, I mean, like, I'm not sure if on camera I'm going to make a judgment call one way or another about, uh, like, any consulting firm. Um, what, <laughs> what, I, what I will say is, you know, my, my opinion is that if you have a company that just needs a, like, if it's just a problem solved, it's like if you just needed, like, a logo done, somebody might be able to do a logo for you. But if, like, machine learning at all is going to be core to what you do, and I believe, like, most competitive companies going forward are going to need machine learning core to what they do. Um, you need to have that in-house. You That's can't like now, I don't think you necessarily need a research team with 20 postdocs. Like most companies don't need that, but to not have any machine learning competency in-house, if that's at all uh, like a competitive advantage or a core competency for you, uh, which I think is important for, for most companies or many companies in growing more and more, um, I, I personally wouldn't farm that out. I'd be doing that. You need, you need that in-house in some way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, again, I don't want to like try and make a judgment about any <laughs> consulting. <laughs> Can't cover them. No. Um, you know, like I said, I think anything like that, that piece is eventually going to have to be in-house. Your ability to interface those two groups, I just, I think there's some things you can't outsource. Um, and maybe you can in the short term, you know, it might be something that, you know, specifically you need, you have a need that has to be filled tomorrow. And maybe the only way you can get that need filled is by outsourcing it or having somebody do that on a consulting basis. Uh, you know, those, there are certainly times that that, uh, that that needs to happen, but I'd be pretty worried for any company that has anything data-wise, anything prediction-wise, any like machine learning that's important to their company to not have that inside their company. I'd be, pr I'd be pretty concerned about the like long-term prospects of that company. All right.